Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part 19 of our point and click adventure series in Unity. Today we're going to start making our prerequisites, which are going to extend the functionality of our switchers by setting things up so that we can or can't use them based on the state of another switcher. So for example, in our game, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this blue cube that we have right now, and this is one of our um, 3D model viewers. If we go to the cube itself, we see it has this observer uh, component on it. And I want to make this so that if our can is not active, which is our current switcher that we have, um, if it's not active, then we can't actually observe it. Um, this could obviously be extended much further in your game to things like you can't get into a room unless the door is open, you can't use a machine unless it's powered by something, any sort of idea like that. But this is kind of using our basic um, system that we have right now, how I'm gonna, we're going to start to show how these might work. And so for this first one too, worth noting that you're going to be able to get to the cube. It's just that then when you click on it, nothing's going to happen. So um, let's get started. We're going to start by creating a new script, C Sharp script, and I'm just going to call this prerequisite. And we can open that up in Mono Develop. Let that load. And so this um, we can keep as a mono behavior. That's fine. We're just going to be we're going to be attaching this to nodes ultimately, um, and I'm going to delete all of this right here. We don't need starter update for this, and save that. What I am going to add though is I'm going to add a public switcher, and we're going to call this um, watch switcher. Uh, it's not a great name, uh, I'll maybe think of a better one for it. But basically this is going to be the switcher that we're watching um, to see what state it's in. And this is going to be something that we have to um, have to plug in manually in the inspector. Um, but that's kind of like the whole the sort of level building process that we're doing here is that we're going to create these sorts of nodes that have prerequisites and then say this is what you should be paying attention to to see whether or not we can actually um, interact with it. I'm also going to create a quick, um, another quick function here. I'm going to call this, make this a public function, and we're going to return a boolean. And basically, what this function is going to do is this function is going to look at the switcher and say, is it in the true state? And so we're going to call this, say, um, we'll call it complete. And so what this is going to do. Actually, you know what? We're not going to make this a function. We're going to um, make this a, uh, a getter setter, or really just a getter. And the reason for that is that we don't really need um, this to run a function per se. We just need it to check um, the variable in switcher. Let's actually pull open our switcher script here. Well, all we're going to be doing is checking this state script. And we're going to want to see if it's true or if it's false. So what we're going to do is in our prerequisite, all we're going to do is return watch switcher dot state. So if it is true, then it will return true. If it is false, it will return false. We're going to kind of also set up right now in our heads. Um, we would probably put this in our game design document to say for every switcher, every switcher right now currently starts out as false. And then once we interact with it, it becomes true. And we're always going to want that to be the case in terms of solving puzzles and that. The reason I'm kind of actually clarifying this is that there might be some cases where it might be the other way around. You would think, for example, if you have a locked door, you might say locked starts as true and you want it to become false. Well, we're going to kind of, we're going to say no to that. We're going to say it's going to be the other way around. We're going to want to make sure that a door would start as unlocked being false and then become true. We want everything to become true and once it's true that means that its condition is met. That's also ultimately what it is. Is, is the condition met? Um, so here uh, we're going to make sure that if this is returning false still, for example, if we have not yet interacted with that can we have in the corner, then it's going to return false. Once we do so, then it's going to return true and then it's going to, so that's going to qualify as being complete. So how all this is going to work now is when we go into our, is it our interactable script? 
No, it is our node script. Probably our prop script, yes. So in our prop, prop script right now, what happens is when we arrive at a prop, we if it has an interactable component on it, then, um, then we make it um, enabled. However, we don't want to do we don't want to just do this as a matter of course anymore. We want to change this to be if there's a prerequisite on this interactable, then we're going to check if it's if it's complete, and if it's complete, then we're going to set it to true. So we can do all that. We'll keep that there actually. Um, I'm going to update our comment here too. We'll say make this object interactable if prerequisite is met. And so what we're going to say here is um, if inter does not equal null, then we're going to quick, quickly run a check here and say if inter dot get component actually we can just say if get component prerequisite and get component prerequisite dot oh, whoops, dot complete make sure you have your brackets in um, actually no well yes but no if we have a prerequisite on this node and if it's not completed then we can return we do not want to continue to this stuff here however if either of these is not the case, if we don't, if we just don't have a prerequisite, then it won't even go to check this. Or if we have a prerequisite and it's complete, then don't return. We actually do want to activate these two things. This should be all we need. Let me save and see if this will work now. So let's go over to our prerequisite. We've got our prerequisite class. We've got our blue cube. Just got the observer. Which is our which is an interactable for us. I'm going to drag and add this pre prerequisite script onto it. Now we need to make sure we have a switcher on there, and the switcher is our can prop. Yes, can prop has the switcher. So I'm going to go back up to blue cube quickly here, and drag can prop on there. So now what's happening is prerequisite is on here, and what we should see we'll start off first one step at a time here. We'll first check and see if we go right to our blue box right away, this should not be met, and so therefore we should not be able to interact with either the collider or the observer. So let's try this out. We'll hit play, save and play. So that is blue because that's our starting color for it. So let's actually go to our big game view, move up to it. We can still go to the box, but now we should not have the collider, we should not have the um, observer come up, which it doesn't. We see that because we have um, this prerequisite, which is not currently met, um, we cannot interact with this. However, if I back out of here and we go around and move up, there is. Um, a conversation worth having here uh, about affordances and good level design that um, I'll definitely get into in a future video but you can see part of it there the fact that we're bouncing back and forth between nodes because right now I can't really tell where our um, colliders are so if I go over here now though and I go to my can and I click it now it's turned on and we see the one um, the one at the table we want is turned on now I can go back over here Come on, where's that middle node? Did I not make that? Oh, I don't think I ever actually made that a reachable node. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have to pause this for a second here and let me fix that. So in our room corner box, oh no, it's totally reachable. Why is that not? 
being accessible from where we were. Oh, I bet I know why. I don't think I backed out from the camera, from the can. All right, so we know right now the box we cannot interact with. We can go to it, can't interact. Okay, we back out of there. Go back to over to our can here. Turn it on, back out. That should help us, let's see here. There we go. So now this is orange, that's the color we made it. So now we know this is active. So we should now be able to um, interact with our blue cube. I'll put that on there so we can also see here if these two become active once we get to the cube. So we go to our table, now to our cube, and now we see that this is active for us. So now we can click and we can interact. So that's really the basic idea of this initial, um, this initial prerequisite is that what we're doing is we're taking um, our normal function of activating these as we arrive at the node and we're saying, hold on a second, just to make sure that the prerequisite is, um, is met first. And again, um, I do really want to clarify that we're setting it up right now where we just have to put in the switcher because we're saying we always want a switcher to be true. If there's a situation where either say you, there may be situations where you want it to be false. Maybe you want it to be more logical that you want the lock to be set to false when it's openable. Or um, you might have multiple modes for something where you want to know if it's in, you know, setting one, two, three, or four. In those kind of cases, you'll need to add another variable to look for that too. And so in that case, then you would be, instead of just saying, um, in our prerequisite, in, instead of just saying, um, get the state, you would need to say, you know, for example, um, you would put in something like a public bool here, um, state we want, and then instead you'd be returning get return watch switcher dot state equals watch switcher dot state we want something like that basically to say if though then if those two are the same then that will return true not just like how we have it right now two you know perfectly both perfectly valid ways of approaching this um, i'm just kind of doing the one that's a little bit quicker um, for the purposes of these videos but i did want to um, clarify that that this is not the end all be all of how you can do this you can extend this as much as you want you could add multiple switchers if you want to check for multiple conditions before something's available anything like that you can totally do this is again really just a um you know, quick and straightforward way, uh, minimum viable product to get you guys started on how to start in, um, introducing these prerequisites into your game. Um, in our next video, I will look at one more extension of the prerequisite, which is actually making it so that you can't even get to a node until a prerequisite is met. Um, it's a very similar idea, but one worth showing that there's a, because you're going to be doing it in a little bit of a different place. So I wanted to show that. And then from there, we'll get into our last type of interactable, which is the um, inventory, um, being able to actually pick up something and bring it somewhere else in the world. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.